Welcome to the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies, where there's always another secret. Welcome back, Sixers, to the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies. This is episode 113, and today is July 1st, 2022. I'm Bill, and I'm joined, as always, by my speculative co-hosts, Amy and Jordan. Welcome, guys. Hello. How are y'all doing? And Amy is silent. Amy is silent. Sorry, I forgot I had it still turned off. <laughs> Um, anyway, like, I didn't great miss pose, the beat. Though. Yeah, I um, I will do it again in just a second. So I I got a package today, and it is our shirt. So I'm gonna lean away from the the whatever this thing the microphone is. So for those audio people, I'm wearing a purple T-shirt, and it has our our little like logo thingy in the middle. It's yellow, and it's it's on my shirt. And. Right. Is this shirt exclusive to you, Amy? Are you the only person who can get this no, shirt? No, you can really? go to our online store. And if you're what, this is the ladies shirt and um, size up if you're you going to get the ladies shirt because it, it really is. small. Yeah, they run a little small, at least because I, it looked like I, the shirt was going to be way bigger than I thought it would normally need to be for me. But yeah, size up a little bit. Okay, so if, you, if you're if you interested in this, there's also a bunch of other six merch over there. Yes, um, and apparently the can... men's shirts should fit just how you mm -hmm. normally fit, because that's but how men's clothing works. If you're interested in this, head on over to store.streamelements.com slash Cosmere Studies. That's where you can get all sorts mm -hmm. of stuff with our logo plastered all over it. Yes, free advertising. So, um... Before we get started, I do want to remind our listeners that the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies is not a spoiler-free podcast. That means that if there's something that you have not read yet from the Cosmere and you don't want it spoiled, make sure to go read that first, then come back and join the discussion. Tonight, we're actually finally going to be going through our mailbag and discussing at least some of the questions and theories that you've sent in. Remember, we love getting theories and questions and stuff and hopefully we'll be able to answer these more often um but listeners send us your questions and theories to cosmere studies at gmail.com for those of you who listen to the podcast recordings or watch videos on youtube we would like to remind you that it's possible for listeners to interact with us live as we record the episodes at www.twitch.tv slash innkeepers table we record episodes every other Monday night, starting at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern. So please join us. Take an active part in the discussion because y'all are awesome and we love having you to distract us and actually help guide the conversation sometimes. There's yeah. been some really cool input that you, you, leads you us to discussions that, that we don't really expect. And sometimes you remember the name of that character that we can't remember or you'll Google it for <laughs> us. And it's great. We appreciate that. Uh, the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies is made possible uh, by the support of our listeners and patrons. The show will, of course, continue to be free, but if you want to help us out, head over to patreon.com slash Cosmere Studies. Even a buck or two per episode is just so much help, and we really appreciate it. Um, you will get immediate access to our Discord channel, where you can talk about the show and the Cosmere with our other listeners. Uh, we've got a great community. We've got some great discussions. We've just got a lot of fun going on over there. You'll also get early access to bonus episodes, exclusive access to other bonus content, and other good stuff. Jordan, time to yes. check in with you. How uh, is the is the uh, Era 2 reread going? Not good whatsoever. Uh -oh. For those who don't know, uh, I spent about the last week uh, in incredible tooth pain. Um, I had a root canal. That uh, didn't go quite right, but I didn't realize it because we had uh, a good numbing agent there. And then uh, I had a fun weekend that I had to fight through. Had almost no sleep. Was sleeping in my car so that I could sleep upright. And uh, yeah, so I'm behind on things. 
Things are good now, though. I have uh, an antibiotic that uh, makes me sleepy, and I have painkillers that uh, make me happy. And uh, so there is a chance I just fall asleep on tonight's stream. And if that happens, we have a great moment. Prescribed by a good doctor. So please. <laughs> yeah. Jordan? No. <laughs> We'll find no, out. No, eh, no, not funny. Not funny at all. The Sanderson Institute of Cosmic <gasps> Studies does not, you know, justify or condone. Yeah, that's. Meanwhile, stuff. one of our most active people in our <laughs> Discord is Dr. Feelgood. So, you know. <laughs> oh, gosh. Anyway. <clears throat> Moving on to uh, <laughs> less disturbing topics, it's time for the Cosmere thing of the week. Doink, or whatever yes. sound we're doing. we don't know. Um, so for this one, I came across this today, and I thought it was actually really cool. So on on the Cosmere subreddit or the Mistborn subreddit, uh, someone I can't remember the the name. Oh, let me sorry, button. let me find the name of the person who posted it. It was where is his name? Where is her his or her name? Mm-mm. The AI must have submitted it. Izzy B. Witched um, went through and used an AI program to generate art based off of the titles of the original Mistborn trilogy. And there are some cool pictures. So there's one for uh, uh, the one that's on screen right now is the final empire. Indeed. And then uh, I don't know how, like, did he go into how he generated it? Cause it seems a little, there are a lot of, there are a lot of art um, AI programs where what you do is you put in a term and it will pull from art on the internet and combine it Aww. in in such a way using algorithms and stuff gotcha. and generate something based on that. It's not necessarily- like it's because it, this like the figure it gets here. It's like that's clearly like Vin's hair, mm-hmm. which and means so they, like they how probably it pulled know? from uh, from Final Empire fan art and covers yeah. and all sorts of stuff. I'm always intrigued yeah. how stuff like this works. So. Mm-hmm. The next one is the Well of Ascension, which looks incredibly epic. Let's see if Jordan Ooh. can get that up on it's the screen. Up. That's pretty. Okay, so it's it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's like this, basically a waterfall spire is what it looks like. Uh, it's got a very otherworldly feel in a to really it. big like cavern hole, like like a well uh, that's ascending. Well, it's a re- like it looks more like a natural well almost. Like there's some places where there's just like a big hole to underground caverns and things like that. See, and I actually saw it as a uh, sort of a galaxy scape. Um, if you look oh. at the there's there's swirls around the the bottom section of it that makes it look almost like a, a spiral oh. galaxy. Like the top part makes me think of a wall, mm-hmm. which makes me and think that's of- what's kind of cool about these AI generated art. And then the third one is the Hero of Ages, and it looks like oh. Dalinar. <laughs> so. We got some cross intended to by one of the munchkins. Oh, yeah. Or maybe a member of like the lollipop guild, (laughs) which is the munchkins. Yes. So I I, well, I just wanted to get the more official group. It's a hobbit with got it. It's a full guild. There we go. They've unionized. Anyway, really cool visible art. We'll have the link to this in our show notes. So if you're listening just to the audio, then go into the show notes and click the link there. And uh, it should take you to it. But there's some really cool visuals. I just thought it was really neat. And that's Pretty. the Cosmere thing of the week. Doink. Doink. Um, before, before we get to the questions, one other thing is if you are familiar with our YouTube channel, we now have playlists other than just the reread playlist. So if you want to just find Warbreaker stuff or Stormlight Archive or Mistborn or interviews, then you can go on our YouTube channel. And there's awesome. playlists. Very cool. Yeah, Amy spearheaded that. Yep. Yes. Amy, Amy took charge. This is what I do in the evening is I do random organization. Yay. All right. So should we jump to our uh, first question? Yes. Yes. Okay. This one, I'm just as a heads up, this is long. This does not uh, fit into our request for short and concise, <laughs> but there's some interesting stuff in here and there's a lot to respond to. Um, I've got a lot of thoughts. Jordan's got a lot of thoughts. Amy's got a lot of thoughts. And so I, I, I kind of want this to be a bit more of a round table discussion once we get to it. So I'll just read straight through the whole thing. And, uh, if you get, and then we'll talk about it after. So 
Noah writes, Dear Bill, Amy, and Jordan, Silver is a god metal! Exclamation point. Or at least that's my theory. So far as I can find, silver is the only metal that can be alimatically burned with no effect. At one point, Brandon said that was being alimatically inert, but this term has changed over time and is not considered alimatically inert like aluminum. So the fact that silver can be burned presumably means that silver is an alimatically viable metal. The only metals left that would be alimatically viable are god metals, meaning unless there's more than 16 metals, which may somewhat undermine preservation's number clues, silver must be a god metal. Let's come at this from another angle, though. On Trinity, silver is shown to have interesting effects on shades, possibly other cognitive shadows. That was Raffode, so. And Brandon has said that silver has got has some weird properties, but on Scadrial, they're largely undiscovered. Other words of Brandon state that silver and aluminum can't be infused with stormlight, but that silver doesn't seem to bl- block investiture like aluminum. This all seems to suggest that silver is something unique across the Cosmere rather than in a specific system or planet, which initially seems like it might contradict my overall theory, as every time we've seen god metals, they have been on the world invested by that particular shard, with a possible exception of the trellium spike in Era 2, but it probably came from somewhere Trell has invested. However, there are ways this still works. One way is that silver has been moved quite a bit by world hoppers. This does bring up some questions, mainly why move silver? But this explanation seems to to work. The other explanation, while a little bit of a stretch, feels more plausible. Silver is not a god metal, it's the god metal. Brennan has been asked three different times about Adenalsium having a god metal, to which he only replied with a raffo. I could be reading into that too much, but it seems to me that there's something there. There also seems to be very little silver on Scadrial, the world associated with metal, which seems particularly odd. They can obviously recognize it, but we see silver only once or twice on Scadrial apart from Vin's earring. Speaking of the earring, Brandon raffled a question about who plated it with silver in 2017. This seems to imply that something else is going to be revealed about the earring, quite possibly something involving the silver plating. With so little silver seen on Scadrial, it seems plausible that silver isn't naturally occurring on Scadrial which when paired with the fact that silver is present in relatively significant amounts on Trinity, Cell, and Roshar, I think it's on Taldane too, but the nature of graphic novels makes it hard to tell, would point to silver being a god metal of someone invested on all those planets except Scadrial. The only one that seems to fit would be Adenalsium. He most likely would be invested throughout the entire Cosmere, at least whatever, whatever existed pre-shattering. The argument for silver being the god metal for Adenalsium might be a little more shaky, but I'm reasonably confident that this is the case. And when paired with the first argument, I'd be genuinely surprised if silver doesn't turn out to be a god metal. I might be overlooking something, but I'm relatively confident that I have found any relevant information that could tie to this theory. Of course, there's so much out there that I definitely could have missed something. Sincerely, Noah. Okay, there was a lot in there. The first thing I want to address is his comments on Raffos, because Brandon has said multiple times, when Brandon Raffos something, that does not necessarily mean it's significant. It means, it could mean one of several things. One, I haven't decided yet. Two, it's, uh, I, I just don't want to codify this just yet. Three, I have, you know, it, it doesn't matter. And I don't want to tell you it doesn't matter because Brandon saves some raffos just so that he can have this because he doesn't want people just saying, oh, he raffled something that's important. Mm-hmm. So those, those are the things that's one of the main things that stands out to me. So the fact that he raffled these things about silver doesn't mean that. Yeah. Now, regarding silver, um, not. We, we don't not us not seeing silver on Scadrial. There we see actually see sil- silver quite a few times, but it's as part of an alloy because Electrum is an alloy of gold and silver. Okay. So we have seen silver burned alimantically. We we have seen silver burned. S- silver is very very common. Oh yes, it's uh, so I I don't want to sit here and poo poo your entire theory. Um, there are some very interesting trains of thought in yes. here. Yeah. Silver 100% is not a god metal. Um, it is, it's naturally occurring. And Brandon has even talked about it himself in his own uh, annotations. Um, specifically in his chapter 60 of, uh, oh, dang it, what was this one? Of Hero of Ages. Uh, he's, he's talking about silver, the useless metal. Mostly because he talked about how originally it was what tin was going to be. Was, it was going to be silver. Mm-hmm. Um, because you thought the, the pewter was an alloy of silver. Yeah. 
and he had to move a bunch of stuff around, but he said, uh, and th this is where he gets the allomantically inert line. Um, I toyed with using it in place of aluminum at the end of book one, but I realized that wouldn't work. It was too common. So if it had any allomantic powers, people would know about them for certain. Only a metal that was very hard to find, like aluminum, would be believable as a new metal that most people hadn't heard of. So silver is allomantically inert, just one of the quirks of the magic system. Now, whilst I was uh, struggling with tooth pain, I was delving deep into this thing because he's because uh, he. Oh, my goodness. I forgot the name. Who was who wrote this question? Noah? I forgot. No. Noah. Noah. Yes. Thank you. Uh, he said. Silver can be burned, to which I was like, what? No, because uh, Brandon said it's uh, allomantically inert. I always took that as when he said it, that it like it didn't react to allomancy, that it was something that wouldn't be burned. I've since read enough that makes me think that I was overreading into that, and it seems silver can be burned. There's some interesting but... implications there. Mm hmm. Because. <laughs> If Mistborn can burn silver, why don't they know what it does? The implication being, whatever it does, they can't figure out what that thing is. Um, there's also some other interesting implications. I have put together so much research material off this question because I went down quite the rabbit hole. So let let me just start here. Um, I didn't know it got it could burn. Um, Something that is interesting is that it is a metal that reacts to shades. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a very interesting word of Brandon. Um, let's see, where was I? Where did I put this? Everything is, of course, organized so well right now. Let's see, there it is. Someone asked the question. Would it be possible to use an aluminum spike to kill a spren? To which Brandon responded, no, that's not going to work. Silver, on the other hand, there's some possibilities. Brandon voluntarily dropped this. This year, very recently, June of June 16th, 2022. So, so like two weeks, weeks ago. Oh, that's the spoiler stream I still haven't watched. Dang it. So. I, I noticed an uptick in people talking about silver on the uh, R Cosmere subreddit. I didn't know why. Then I found this word of Brandon and I'm like, okay, I, I see why everyone's talking about silver now. It's interesting. It would imply there's something innate about silver that in that interacts with cognitive shades. Let's go a di bit deeper. So do you all remember uh, Rhythm of War? Yeah. Of course. Okay, good, I mean, good. I'm going to start asking some really <laughs> obvious questions that are just okay. setups. Uh so in one of the cool things in that book is we got a bunch of uh we got a bunch of uh the uh what is it before the chapters? I always forget the word for it. Epigrams. 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 Yes, epigrams. Or epigrams. Uh, that dealt with uh that dealt with fabrial construction. Right. Mm. Yeah. Um and something that shocked us was uh as we started looking into these things we found out that some fabrials uh they they react to different uh metals differently for right. yeah. for example uh zinc in contact with the gemstone will cause the capture spread to more strongly manifest zinc is used in rioting brass in contact with the gemstone will cause the spread to withdraw in its power to dim in allomancy we use that to uh soothe. to soothe Brass in con or sorry, bronze in contact with the gemstone will cause it to alert someone or objects, entities, or phenomena nearby by increasing its brightness. Bronze is what we use uh, to do uh, seeking. our seeking. Seeking, and it's used in uh, it's used in the uh, I forget what the alerter fabrials, right. where you can get it to alert to specific phenomena. Now. There's a very interesting Fabriel that uh, kind of skipped under our view, but in light of this, there's some very interesting implications. R Rabonail's knife. Mm -hmm. it ha it's a racium dagger, and we know racium does something where it can conduct uh, investiture along it somehow. Right. It, it's, pol it's polarly. Yes. Well, 
if I could move to Navani's notebook. Navani, the white gold metal vein down the middle conducts investiture. Raboniel called the metal racium, and there's not enough in it in the dagger to collect her soul out of a herald. I am not sure I believe her. Let me skip forward. Uh, Navani says, the ruby is housed in a metal other than racium. Silver, maybe? Then Raboniel responds, I can confirm the metal is not racium, but a silver nickel alloy that does not affect the dagger's function. Okay. What was that dagger supposed to do? Trap a trap investiture. Well, so that's form. that's the one that uh, that was Vire's knife was supposed to trap investiture. This uh, conducts investiture through. It's uh, it, it, it works the same. Vire's knife is the same sort of knife. Yeah, we, we it's 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 just that it was reversed because again it's polar. Yeah. So, but the thing is, we know silver repels uh, shades on Threnody. Mm-hmm. If we take the same idea that that metals have some sort of transitive property ac- that affect different uh, magic systems in si- similar ways, that there's some sort of pattern, it's interesting that this knife that is used to uh, to either trap or kill, depending upon what what the gem is infused with, a uh, a spren has a silver nickel alloy as part of this fabrial design where we already know fabrial designs get affected by the metal touching the the gem. Mm-hmm. Okay. Which implies further that silver does something to affect cognitive sh- cognitive shadows. Right? And, and so what's interesting so that is that we know that uh Mistborn can burn this but they don't know what it does. Because the effect probably has something to do with cognitive shadows, and that's not exactly a phenomenon that is common on uh, on Skadriel. Yeah. Kelsier is the only one that we know of. Cause, Fair enough. Uh, yeah, and so then the other thing that intrigued me was uh, I was thinking back to Hero of Ages and how they had a hard time discovering the Rule of Sixteen. Partially because they didn't discover 16 medals at that point. Well, that's because the Lord Ruler had been suppressing them. Yeah, he had. But even with the discoveries that, uh, that they had made, they still had only the, the base eight. Um, they knew about uh, Atium, which they considered as part of the chart because they thought it was paired originally with uh, gold. And then found out Electrum's actually paired with gold. Right. They thought Mal ATM was part of the chart. If you go into the book itself, Mal ATMs right. they put that's they the that's in. the eleventh medal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, then they learned about aluminum, duralumin, and lauracium because Ellen actually physically burned it. Mm-hmm. Um, which still leaves a uh, bendeloy, cadmium, chromium, yeah, bendeloy, cadmium, chromium, and nitrosil. nitrosil. So they're still missing two metals, and I. I, I this is the part I forgot to go check. If I remember correctly, basically Ellen said it would make sense that there's two more medals. Um, and that was part of their figuring out the rule of 16. Um, if you go to secret history, the we have a one of the earlier conversations between preservation and Kelsier where he like leans into Kelsier. He's like, it's really quite brilliant. And he's like, what's brilliant? 16. And Kelsier is just sitting there. What? 16, what? And it's like, metals. There's 10 metals. What? No, that's stupid. <laughs> Why would it be and, 10? It's 16. And so the Ruin's obviously messing with things. The Lord Ruler messed things up as well. But even, even with Preservation's big plan, 16 would have been very difficult of the metals for them to find because uh, what were the odds their development would let them find chromium and bendeloy or nicrosil and... Uh, Cadmium and cadmium. Yeah. And so, cause those are fairly advanced metals. What if it was cause he was expecting them to discover the other metals, silver and the silver nickel alloy. And he anticipated them to, to just dis- like to think that atium and loracium were part of the same thing. Mm. Cause it, it just, the odds of them have at that point in his plan of figure, finding the the sixteen that we think in the modern chart are fairly low. I don't know that I, I don't know that I agree with that because the plan was put into effect so far ahead of time that I think he 
he just assumed that they would they find them there. at some point. I mean, remember, the final empire lasted for a thousand years and all progress was stifled during that time. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I don't think it was. Well, and, and it was it was cons- there was at least a couple hundred years at least before that. Right. So yeah. I, what I'm saying is I don't think it's so far fetched for. um, For preservation to assume that they would find it considering after the the lord ruler fell they had found the other the others within 300 years yeah well the last two they got a push from say zed they did but yeah. it, but still i mean the, i i don't think it was so far-fetched when that when he set the plan in motion it, because yes preservation leans in and says it's quite brilliant preservation's also not all there at this point anymore yeah he's, he's a little loopy yeah and so he like he's looking back thinking i set this plan in motion and it was brilliant things aren't quite the same as he was expecting them to be when he set the plan in motion so i i I don't know that it's so far-fetched for him to it's it's more that assume that of silver is going to be far more accessible for them and you would think that uh if he were trying to set that up it seems to me he would think that their ability to burn the metal would show them something but because they can't find what it does, they don't really experiment with it at all. I'm not convinced. Well, regardless, um, there was one more thing. Oh, he was talking about uh, the silver plating on uh, Vin's earring. And let's see, where was that? I had a word of Brandon on that somewhere. Is it here? I lost it somewhere. Anyway, it was interesting that Brandon Brandon does point out that it's a uh, plated silver, um, right? And it's what where it comes in uh, in the story, if you'll recall, is that uh, Vin ha- loses her earring when she uh, gets taken uh, hostage by uh, by the Yeoman. Inquisitors, Ye- Yeoman. Oh, you mean at the yeah, in the third, in the third book, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, she loses it, and Yeoman's actually the one who gives it back to her, mm-hmm. and he seems to be like looking at her, like he's expecting her to do something with it, because he's confused as to why she has a, why she has this earring. earring always with her, and mm-hmm. it's silver plated, and it ends up just being a way, you know, for her to not have Ruin talking to her for a while, but then Ruin can talk to her again. Mm-hmm. But it's clear Yeoman was like, what's going on here? What's the plan? Uh, and because something being plated in silver and that'd be different, you know, as far as a, a spike goes at the very least. Now, we know it's not the the silver that does anything with Vin. It's the yeah. it's the what was it? Brass? Bronze? I can't remember. Whatever the whatever the earring actually was. Bronze. Bronze. OK. Yeah, it was that through the uh, through the ring. The other thing that this entire well that this question sent me down that was interesting, it made me question, because it started making me look at Fabrials, I then remembered in Secret History, Kelsier goes to, um, goes to the Irie, and when he gets there, they what he got seen and they're like oh there's someone here from threnody because they see a cognitive shadow they assume it's from threnody mm-hmm. um and i think it was Noe, one of the ancient ones is like ah my foresight proved good activate the device and he sees a device that uh it has like a gold gem it, it's or yellow gemstone in the middle and he says a goldish looking uh metal framework around it and when it turns on, he's like, oh, no. And then it doesn't do anything. And they're like, oh, well, guess no one from Threnody's here. Guess it was a false alarm. Uh, they must have they must have left. Um, so the, there's a lot of metals that are goldish because it Kelsier isn't able to. He doesn't say specifically what metal it is, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but it makes me think of the locator fabrials. Um, okay. And bronze is a goldish metal. Yeah, um, it is. And so. It's it was just one of these things. It's like, huh, okay, because this actually because secret history actually predates like our a lot of our uh, understanding of Favrials, and it just made me realize Brandon really had uh, planned this all out beforehand. 
Now, True. I want to know how they have one that's attuned specifically to Threnodite shades. Yeah, that that I'm not sure of. Um, I'm not, as we're talking about the Fabriel, though, you mentioned it's a, you know, a silver and nickel alloy. Yeah. Part of me wonders if it's like, because you notice when silver comes into contact with shades, it's spent in some way you know it, it gets that yeah. charred look and yeah. it got, and it has to be replaced it's not usable anymore mm-hmm. i'm wondering if the nickel is like a stabilizing agent for for the the silver in fabrials so that it doesn't go through that process so that rather than so it lasts longer being lasting. expended it um it works more as a barrier or as a sealing agent or as a you know something that much that more was stable. Yeah, that was one thing I considered. The other thing I considered is I wondered if it was in Alamancy, all metals are paired. It made me wonder if silver nickel might be the the paired metal to regular silver, and maybe silver repels something and repels shades, and silver nickel might attract it, which might be why you might use mm-hmm. it in a trapping of uh, Fabrial. Oh, that's true. Because I mean, if I'm, they were trying I'm to still trap not... Kelsier, then that maybe. I'm maybe. still not convinced that silver is just a regular, alimentically viable metal. Well, it's just, interesting it's, that it can be burned. Again, it can be. It, it's part of Electrum. Yeah, no, but like silver by itself can be burned. Hmm. I'm just. I don't know. I'm. I'm. Oh. I'm. I'm skeptical. There's that was the other thing. Know. That was the other thing I didn't, I, I learned that I hadn't been thinking about properly that it got explained through multiple words of Brandon. I always thought, cause they always talk about if you burn metal that isn't in the right, uh, uh, you can get sick or die. Yeah, you can or, get sick. Yeah. And I always thought it was cause you were burning the wrong metal. No, it's just regular metal poisoning. If you, if you oh. burn something in the wrong, uh, if you're trying to burn well, it, and it's not the right stuff. You have leftover metal and, it makes you sick just as it would anyone else. Well, and it, they did ex- explain that with, you know, some of them, if you don't burn it off all the way that it could be metal yeah. poisoning, but it's the, it's the same thing. You, you know, we're not supposed to actually digest metal. Yeah. It sounded though, the, the way it was described, it sounded like this wasn't just a, you know, Oh, you've got metal in you. You're going to get sicker and sicker. It sounded more like it was a, you burn it. Oh, something bad happened. That, yeah. That's the way I read it. Yeah, that's how I read it as well. But there were, I'd have to go back and find them. There were words of Brandon where he sort of clarified that. But then it's also, it's clear Brandon has written himself a little bit into a corner on this mm-hmm. uh, because people pointed out, I think it was cadmium. Cadmium is extremely poisonous to the, yes. to the human body. Yeah. And he's like, well, uh, cadmium bursts, you know, or pulsers, or is that sliders? I don't remember. I'm so okay. bad remembering all the different titles. Anyway, one of them. Uh, basically, he's like, well, they're more resistant to that, so they can leave it in their stomach longer without it. Uh, hmm. Bad reaction. Without it. To which it's like, well, is that true of the other metals? And it sounds to be sort of like a crap. Why did I choose cadmium? <laughs> well, well, it's 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 one of those where I mean, it would if you left it over time, it would still yeah take you out. But but something to do with the spirit web. Would yeah. probably, you know, like there, well, there's some, and we know they're genetically connection different, with it. right? Mm-hmm. And so you can, you can. There, there's some hand, there's some hand waving that you yeah. can do that I, that I would accept. Exactly, yeah. uh, same thing. It was just, but once again, this question sent me down on a rabbit hole that touched on a lot of different things that there's words of Brandon about, and it's also it's just clear that Brandon's been thinking about it, and there's a little bit of ah crap. <laughs> Oh yes, well, and and that's one of the reasons again that he doesn't that that he raffos a lot of things. Yeah, because and and he said several times, even words of Brandon can be counteracted. The books are yeah. what's canon, and, and the, even the books can be counteracted. He he's free to he's, retcon the books. I mean, he he's done that a couple times. Yeah, but typically mo- more minor, but uh, when he realizes it would break the magic system, he tries to he tries to repair it. Yeah. Or or character motivation or whatever. He'll, yeah. he'll go in and he'll go in and make changes. Yeah. But and I mean, so, all things considered, he's kept a lot of stuff straight. Oh yeah. No, it's it's, it's incredible. Universe. It's the fact that he has like I'm a fan of comic books. You want to talk about like things that contradict themselves and stuff like mm-hmm. that. 
Brandon, for as big as he's put together all this, the how little he's had to retcon things is incredible. It's really good, yeah. No, and th- and that's why Karen Ostrom, you know, <laughs> has a job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that like because she she does her job very well. Good job. Is you know you you actually have somebody in charge of continuity. That's how mm-hmm. you keep continuity. Yeah. Because Brandon forgets things about his own books. Understandably, there's a lot of stuff to forget. Yeah. Well, and he's having to think so far ahead. I mean, he, no, no doubt, things that are come that are in play right now are going to be affecting you know the six of the dusk storylines. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. he has to kind of make these. I mean, there's a reason they're talking about all this stuff about what is what is actually Atium. It's clear it's because it must be important going forward. Hmm. why is why is brandon suddenly because that person didn't ask a question about silver they asked it about aluminum brandon could have just said no an aluminum spike wouldn't have killed the spren and he Mm -hmm. could have left it at that he then threw in the silver he he wants us thinking about silver for some reason well the, the thing the thing about silver that i have noticed is at least when it came to the the shades it seemed to actually be able to make physical contact yeah and that's that's something that sets it apart from other metals, just in and of itself. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Because the only thing we've really seen metals do beyond what what they do in allomancy and just regular metal stuff mm-hmm. is they glow on mm-hmm. Skadriel. Well, they they glow to the gods. Yeah, to 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 the to the shards. Yeah, from, shards from, from their perspective. And part of that is, but yeah, it, there, there's just so much stuff. Yeah. And Scadrial in and of itself is just a weird situation because it was artificially created by two shards. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's, it's weird that we're now seeing that through Fabrials, we're seeing that the stuff that's going on, at least in Allomancy, has some sort of greater implication. Mm-hmm. And you're, you're left wondering, like why though and obviously it's something yet. they're gonna they're gonna explore but it is very interesting that the the knife that's supposed to uh trap someone uses silver and we've seen silver interact with shades before and you just wonder it's like is that is these two things connected it, it's it's unique that raboniel specifies exactly what it is well, Raboniel, that that's her personality. She's going to yeah. express exactly what it is. Yeah. You know, but, 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 but the conversation between Brandon, Navani and the conversation that, between Navani and Raboniel, that's how it's going to play out. Yeah. You know, she says it's some sort of sort of metal silver question mark. Raboniel's going through seeing her notes and she's like, I am going to tell you exactly what it is because I am yeah. an engineer and that is how what we work. Do? That's yeah. how we yeah. do. <laughs> it's how engineers do. Mm hmm. Yep. No, but it's, it's just interesting. He's already shown metals affect Fabrials and they affect Fabrials in a way that is similar to Allomancy. And now we're given a metal that we don't know. Like as far, as far as we're told, it's inert in Allomancy, but now we see it having an effect, but that's also tied with a God metal in Racium. Mm -hmm. So we don't know the exact things. It's just, I don't know. For something that when I first read the question, it's like silver's a god metal, and I was very, you know, very dismissive, like, no, it's not. And then it's like, but wait, there actually is a lot of weird stuff going on here that I wasn't paying attention to. I could have sworn I don't I don't have the proof, but I could have sworn there was some quote or some Rafo or some line or whatever from Brandon where he said that he that silver was just kind of a cool thing, like he wanted well, to be kind of special, or I don't know he, if it was somebody yeah, speculating. He wanted. Um... The uh, he wanted it to be what ten is in in schedule, and he wanted because he he liked the name Silver Eye. Oh, okay. Because and you know, he just thought Silver Eye sounded cool, and he wanted mm-hmm. to have that be the, the thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that might be. And, what then, and then he realized, <laughs> oh, that actually doesn't work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One of the things he said was he was really worried that. Uh, he said, like, even up to, like, everything getting published, he was worried one silver eye might have, uh, slipped, might through. have slipped through the cracks somehow. 
but yeah. So Noah, this was a really cool question. <laughs> I, like, yeah. I, I really did enjoy this question. And while I don't, I'm not convinced by your argument that, that silver is a God metal or more specifically at God metal. I still think that the way you came to this conclusion was really cool. And I'd love to see more of our listeners send in this kind of question. Yeah. It was really fun to just... follow the logic and go, Oh, if that is the mm-hmm. case, that's really cool. I'm not convinced. I love your thought process. It's fun. All right. Should we move on to the next question? Sure. Okay. The next one is more of a fun discussion and Jordan, I think you'll enjoy this one. So Scott, got writes, the high Dean's list here. <laughs> Yeah, so Scott writes, so breath seems to be the best approximate measurement for investiture. That this is something that Brandon said. It's sort of the only quantifiable <laughs> investiture me- measurement we the, really the have. Although, standard kind of. Yeah, although I, I feel like we can start moving into something when it comes to like gemstones and and that, that kind of aspect. Mm-hmm. But he says, where in breaths do you think these would be ranked? And he gives us a list. A, a fifth level radiant herald, a.k.a. nail. B, a level three radiant. C, a mistborn. D, an unmade. E, the lord ruler. F, a herald. And G, a level five radiant. So I don't know that I... This is a nice easy question. (laughs) I am not prepared to give actual numbers on this. Jordan, you might be more willing to do so. I don't know. So let's start first with just the fact that breaths is the standard unit. Uh, mm-hmm. We might eventually be able to start using uh, something with gemstones. The problem with gemstones is there's a lot of factors that come mm-hmm. into how much it can hold because it's not right. just clarity color. And cut and- it's clarity. It's cut. It's how good the cut was. Mm-hmm. And so I think breath is going to remain the gold standard because it's so simple because it's just like there's one per person on Nalthus. Yeah. And it doesn't matter how awesome you are, unless you're yeah, right. re- unless you you have a divine breath, it's the same for everyone. Yep. And so this is kind of a cool. It is a cool measurement. Now we have the heightenings list here. Well, I, but before before we go into that, the other problem with this, when Brandon wrote Warbreaker. I I, I think for this to still work as a good quantifiable measurement, Brandon would, it would require some retcons. Um, just because for example, to create night blood, it took 1000 breaths. I don't know. Like now I understand night blood has since been regularly consuming additional investiture, but I think 1000 breaths is a low, very low number. It's a very low number for something of that magnitude. Yeah. Not 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 necessarily scale cuz I don't know that it was huge but to create a sentient thing from cold metal. I think I think it would require more than a thousand breaths. So I I I suspect that Brandon would want to go through and do a little bit of retconning on that. That's just my my personal suspicion. I I can't speak for him obviously. Yeah. So I mean, but, it's also possible that Nightblood got more sentient or something mm-hmm. as time yeah. went on with more right. breaths. And well, so maybe that's the thousand could still work as long as that was the case. And as you look through, um, the, the other thing is, as you look through at that, um, the, the list, the chart, first, this is kind of a spectrum. It's not a, once you hit this, how appropriate being, this happens. Yeah. Once you hit this being that now you have this ability as you get closer to those zones, the different abilities sort of manifest themselves and become, become stronger, but it's not like, okay, I have 50. Now I can do this. Now I have perfect pitch or whatever, or perfect uh, sense. uh, What's it called? Uh, Life Life sense. sense. Mm. Well, and and to your point about it being only a thousand, the other thing to factor in is anytime you awaken something, it's not just the number of breaths. It's also the intent and the command. And the person and the, so the person doing it. And so, well, and, uh, and I think, I think that is kind of supposed to speak to, uh, to Vasher's and, um, I'm blanking on her name. It starts with an S. Uh, the, 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 the other, Shasha, the other Shasha, Sha- what's he? Shashara. 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 Yeah. 
Well, because she was at the ninth heightening when mm-hmm. she did this. So this is a very heavily invested person mm-hmm. who who's very scientifically minded com- doing a very specific command. And we still see Nightblood kind of came out wrong from what mm-hmm. they intended. They were trying to make a shard blade mm-hmm. and they instead made a shard killing blade. Um, <laughs> An eldritch puppy. Yeah, such eldritch puppy. But I do still think it's a good... Uh, you know, we can sort of look at it as sort of a guide, maybe. Because, like, a yes, thousand... No, absolutely. Yeah. Because a thousand is the fourth heightening. So pretty pretty meaty as far as cost goes. Um, Because that's, like, the perfect life sense. And uh, double that's agelessness. So let's start with that. Anyone who gets agelessness has to get at least 2,000 breaths, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So... You know, fifth uh, herald of the fifth heightening. Uh, let's see, what are the abilities here in the heightening's chart? We have uh, instinctive awakening, invested breath recognition, command breaking, uh, greater awakening, audible command, color distortion, perfect invocation, mental commands, possibly others. Blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. So let's just start with that. Um, all heralds have some rudimentary form of a life sense. At least with oh, each absolutely. other. Absolutely. Um, they all have something to do with the command, because that's what the oath pact is. It's a it's a command. Yeah. Well, the the thing is, remember, a herald is also a cognitive shadow. Mm-hmm. It's not necessarily an invested person. It is pure investiture that has taken form. Yeah. Mm. So someone like Nail. I'm going to put them somewhere in the seventh or eighth heightening. So it's five to 10,000 breaths, maybe. Oh, that seems fair. Cause, cause we, it's not just that he's a herald. He's a herald of the fifth heightening he's or not heightening him. fifth, uh, ideal. Ideal. Yeah. And so you would say he's got to, he's got to have something more going on than just, uh, just a regular herald. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like we could sort these. I, the, the the numbers, I'm still just not... Yeah. Oh, yeah. the, the numbers are going to be... They're very soft, right? Because even mm-hmm. in the chart, it's said, this is kind of a generic, you know, but, you know, just sort of a loosey-goosey guidepost. Approximate post. measurement, mm-hmm. you know. More like it's guidelines. The, yeah. It's the pirate's Look, code. I doubt everyone at exactly a thousand breaths gets perfect life sense. I bet some no. people it's a little before, some people it's a little after. Mm-hmm. How you know they probably are factors in who they that are Brandon Brandon has character. confirmed that yeah yeah so all right what were some of the other ones on the list because I have too many tabs well, open and let's I've start with let's start the with the lowest are. one let's start with the lowest one that would be either a mistborn or a level three radiant yeah I don't know I mean because I would probably say a mistborn I don't know because, mistborns I mean, are so weird but and well, mistborn uh, have have all have access to all of well, their that, abilities that, that, versus a the level thing. three radiant does not. Are are yeah, we right? talking about a, a mistborn who is tapping like you know if, if that he's actually burning con- cur- mean- currently burning, or is is it just somebody who happens to be a mistborn? I think we have to be saying it's while they're burning because okay, because that's the thing. Just yeah. a mistborn, I'd say it's relatively low. I'd, I'd say zero to one. I Wait, think it's more than one. I wouldn't say it's more than well. So remember, remember, you've got to realize, you got to remember the uh, that people from Nalthus mm-hmm. have a bit more investiture than mm-hmm. any human, anyway, because the breath yeah. puts them up above, and if they lose it, they're 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 down below. It, it kind of straddle. It's sort You're of a bridge a over the line. Either a little more human or a little yeah. less human. I, I guess I'm thinking of, thinking of it in terms of. How many breaths would it take for someone like Vasher or uh, Shah Shahara to try and duplicate what a Mistborn is doing? Well, that's something else entirely. Yeah, but that's because, sort of how I'm thinking of it in terms of while it's being be, burned. Because if that's if that's the case, then a level three radiant can summon a shard blade, and they were trying to create a shard blade with with uh, yeah thousand yeah, and and so that'd be a thousand breaths. Yeah, I wouldn't put it at a thousand breaths necessarily. Well, it would, it would def- a shard blade would definitely have to be a Oh, either a, you you could there's two you could either argue below or above it because below the argument is nightblood does so much more than a shard blade ever does but the the counterpoint is 
Yeah, but a shard blade actually thinks, whereas uh, Nightblood's like a an AI that was uh, just not given enough data. Nightblood points. thinks. He My then forgets, thinks. and then he has no concept well, of time. <laughs> his his memory may not be great, but he does remember things. Mm -hmm. We need to upgrade his RAM. Yes, he needs some more RAM. But no, it's... So, Mist, Mistborns are just sort of weird. Sk Skadrian magic in general is very weird. Yes, it is. Um, yeah. Well, because only... again, Skadrian magic is more a matter of channeling something that's there right? because when they, because the investiture is not in the metals, the investiture yeah. is a key to unlock a connection to preservation. Which and that's where the investiture, investiture is. is. Yeah. Yeah. And so like, the only part, the only Skadrian magic that really interacts with other forms of magic really that we've seen so far is is uh well hemology. hemology, but that's also a square peg and round hole. Yeah. Um, but Farukami has some stuff that could interact. Mm -hmm. We've seen uh we've seen storing memories can be done in breath. It's very similar to something that already happens in right. Farukami. Mm -hmm. But I think the proper answer to Mistborn is does not apply. It's <laughs> it's it's comparing apples and oranges. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just it's it's hard to compare with that one. But we do, but we do know the burning of it matters because uh, canon. Why Kelsier was able to last as long as he did after he died was because he wasn't just burning metal; he was burning, he was flaring. A, 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 and he was flaring a god metal, right? He's because mm -hmm. he was flaring malatium, and so he was he was mainlining some uh, some ruin at that moment. Yeah, you through and and filtering it through the power of preservation because he was taking ruins power mm -hmm. and using preservation's magic system through it. So right, we're we're in we're in crazy go nuts territory with well, Mistborn right now. Not to mention, there are variants varying strengths of Mistborn. Yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, like a, a Mistborn in Vin's day is very different from a Mistborn in like a, a pure Lorasium Mistborn, which is what Ellen, Ellen became. They had very different strengths. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ellen found so. it much easier to break the uh, break the Coloss than Vin did. Right. So she just had precision. Yeah. Now, Vin and again, a level a, a level three Radiant. Are they filled with Stormlight? Because if they're filled with Storm, you know, it's just sort of a but we can at least say, okay, level three radiant. Uh, most of the level three radiants have their shard blade at that point. Mm -hmm. um, so we have to say, at I'd least say a spring's worth of investiture. Yeah. And so I th I'd say about a thousand. I think a thousand still a good measurement because um, they're not ageless. I just don't know. I just honestly, yeah. but the, the thing is, they're not ageless, but when they are channeling or, or when they're holding breaths, they, they heal. heal. Oh, they heal. Yeah. Good. And, and that's kind of what the agelessness is, is just constant healing. Yeah. That's how you would achieve. Agelessness. Uh, well, so agelessness doesn't work like that. Cause you can kill someone who's ageless, uh, in the, in, in the Warbreaker universe. Uh, that's not, they don't that's age. Not, like it's like they stop. Uh, they actually physically stop aging. I don't. I don't think they're, they have a healing factor. That I. I think it kind of is. But the thing is, aging is such slow death. I guess what you mm -hmm. know that you don't have to have like Wolverine level healing factor. It's just sort of a. You're not decaying. You're not losing those. It's I can't. I, they're like called telomeres or tele yeah telomere. Telomeres, and that's like where when your cells are reproducing, they get mm -hmm. shorter and shorter, they get shorter, and shorter and shorter and shorter, and, shorter. and then they exactly. stop doing well. Yeah, and we, so well, like that's what some people have said with elves is they're like, well, they just have super long ones in a book series yeah. that I read. That's how they last so long is because well, because we know you can that. kill uh, the fifth heightening, which is where agelessness comes. That's what's equal to the divine breath. That the the, uh, the oh, they they call them the gods. What are what are they called in canon? Yeah, the returned. Thank you. Oh, yeah. the returned. Those the returned. Returns. So you can kill someone with agelessness. Like the what what it is they have the is as long as they have breath, like they can do incredible things. Like what what they can heal from 
is almost to the level of what Miles can do with gold compounding. Mm. Well, and that's because they have, and, and that's so another much. thing. What what kind of breath are we talking about? Because the returned <laughs> have one breath. Yeah, but it's like a super that's breath. Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so so again, quantifying it just it just gets so complicated. Yeah, but even I, even with what we've got. Yeah, so I would say with the with a third ideal. I'd put them in the 1,000 to 2,000 range uh, just because that's it, it took someone of great skill to sort to make a weapon that did that. And then we got to give them breath on top of that because of I, I, I would compare the agelessness to the healing, even though they aren't they don't do the same thing. They sort of serve a similar purpose if you're counting breaths. Hmm. I just, I, I don't know that I feel comfortable even answering this question with, because the Where scale you, itself is so wobbly. Because, I mean, you have Mistborn, and you have the Lord Ruler, and you have a Herald, and you have a level 5 Radiant, a level well, 3. And well, then the you Lord have, Ruler is something different beyond just a Mistborn, because he, he's oh, a Splinter. Yeah. yeah. It is yeah, interesting. Or a Sliver. We do have one uh, in-universe example of someone comparing uh, a Surge Binder to... Uh, to someone of a specific heightening. When Kaladin went to the tower in the uh, cognitive realm with Rai Aino, mm-hmm. Rai Aino realized lighthouse. he was invested and he's like, or, sorry, yeah, the lighthouse. He's like, oh, what heightening are you? Wait, no. Like, and he starts to figure out, it's like, oh, you're a surge binder. So it's similar enough in with what he thought that he, for a moment, until he you know, looked closer, thought, you know, this, th- you know, this might be a thing. Well, and it, and it makes sense because those, in my opinion, are the two that are the closest to pure investiture. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. um, Cell is obviously pure investiture because you're just basically ripping a hole between realms and pulling a chunk of investiture out. But but it's kind of broken. But well, and they're also not. Kind of. um, <laughs> They're not really channeling it through them themselves, you know, because a yeah, because a an awakener holds the breath within them, a mm-hmm. sh- a surge binder holds the stormlight within them, an elantrian while invested themselves, guides they it. they they guide it into certain formations to create results. Yeah, and so it's I don't know, it was one of those I, I didn't like. I hadn't thought about that till we were looking at this question. I'm like, okay, there's one that's at least, there's at least something we can do with that. Right. There's at least a little bit. Uh, Lord Ruler so, was on that list, and I would just say wherever Susabron is, Lord Ruler's at least that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're both scary. I mean, he's a sliver Very of powerful. the infinite, you know, to use yeah. his own term. Right. And of course, Susabron has thousands upon thousands uh 50,000 breath i looked it up <laughs> oh boy it's so, a lot a little busted but at the same time though P- i know some people be like oh who would win susabron or the lord ruler and it's like well if the lord ruler's taking any fight seriously he basically wins every single one because compounding is busted <laughs> yeah. speed compounding in particular well, and I mean, just and then you unfair. have to think about the fact that the Lord Ruler knows how to fight, and Susa Brun does. And yeah, really... right. that said, we did see what Susa Brun does when he just sort of unleashes. Oh yeah. yes, I'm not saying he's he's totally a pushover, but I'm just saying there's there's going to be a level of battle and battle experience and everything else that's gonna that would yeah. come into it if they did face off. Plus, Please you know don't make what? It, battle royale. I don't want to do battle royale. Plus, you know, <laughs> with with uh, the Lord Ruler being a Mistborn, if he uses, uh, you know, Nicrosil or uh, which one is it? The the one that you just where I think it's sapper. Nicrosil. No, ni- that's a uh, Nicrosil is a is a Nicro burst. That's where you oh supercharge it. It's Nicrosil uh, and is it Cadmium? I can never remember. It's, so it's cadmium or chromium. chromium. I can't remember. Chromium. 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 So, <clears throat> you know, if he does that to uh, to Susabron, Susabron's done. Yeah. He get, he needs to get one good touch in. That's it. <clears throat> yeah. That is a very expensive. Uh... Well, oh, yes. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> but yeah. So, yeah. Oh, man. 
Do we have? <coughs> do you think we have time for one more, or do you think we should start wrapping up? Oh, sorry, uh, puppy bomb again. <laughs> my do- my dog is gassy, and it it's so bad. Uh, Rosie's using canine uh, chemical warfare. I love her, but oh my goodness, oh, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> continue no I was, sorry i just because you mentioned leechers i realized i hadn't looked this up before uh just because i was like oh how does leeching affect uh you know various forms and uh mm-hmm. apparently a leecher could prevent a shard bearer from summoning their blade while if they're holding them that makes sense mm-hmm. yeah uh but uh i do love the someone asked the question <laughs> I'm just yeah. going to grab this one because it, it makes there's, me there's laugh. There's smart listeners out there and, and readers. Yeah. They're very creative. This What would happen if a leecher touched night blood? Brandon, nervous laughter. If a leecher touched night blood, the leecher would be dead. That would not end well. <laughs> Questioner, for the leecher? Question mark. Brandon, for the leecher. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, thank you. I love those questions. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just imagining like two people having an inhale fight over like there, there's like a a bubble in the middle and like one's trying to suck it and then the other one's night blood and suddenly it just like pulls full black hole suction on. Oh man. Yeah, you do not know the, the horrors you have unleashed. I just I, I remember from Venture Brothers of all things, where you get the magical character. And he faces someone that's basically like a god, and he's like, "Uh, we can't go up against him. He's 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 magic." Uh, the other magical characters, well, we're magic. He's more magic. <laughs> more magic. Can't yeah. do that magic. Okay, let let let's start wrapping up. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, we love hearing from our listeners, so please keep sending in questions. We we love these, and we we want more of them from you, so that we can have more of these conversational. If I can put a request in, we are getting closer and closer to uh, the lost metal. So maybe questions and speculations, you know, moving towards those. We're gonna obviously, as we get closer, be covering those topics. So. Yes. Look, if you ask questions like that, we're going to more easily be able to work them into the show. That said, if you don't have any questions like that, we were, are happy to get questions about we any of the other Whatever else, Cosmere yeah. properties. Um, and even the non-Cosmere properties, if you got a question that could spur a cool episode long discussion, that'd be awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, or, or just a quick burst distru- discussion at the end of the show. Um, you can also ask us about the Cosmere or drop us ideas for topics you'd like us to discuss during the show. And while you're at it, we would love to hear feedback. We love feedback. Um, and just we want to know what how you think we're doing, as well as any interesting theories you might have about what's going on in the Cosmere in a specific world or in the Cosmere as a larger whole. You can send all of your questions and suggestions in a brief, concise email to cosmerestudies at gmail.com. And hopefully we could read it as part of a show or a show all itself. Um, we do have a PO box as well at the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies, PO box 970063 or a Muta 84097. Amy, what have you got going on in your other projects outside of the podcast? Um, gardening, but that's not exciting to take pictures of. But my um, my Facebook is Coincidence Cosplay and Props. My Twitter is at Coincidence Cosp because my name is too long. My Instagram is at Coincidence underscore Cosplay and my TikTok is at Coincidence Cosplay. And my website is www.coincidencecosplay.com um, So I am still plugging along on my Nas school and I did my first gaming session of D&D with my children, which was I almost killed my son. So yeah, <laughs> that's fun. Um, yeah, make make the the blobs a little less deadly. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I I'm trying to finish up my Nas school, trying to take it easy on my arm. Horrible about posting pictures, but if you want to look through my old stuff, that's cool. And I plan to very soon actually try and do my uh my TikTok D and D skits. But I will certainly tell people when that's coming. Cool. But I'm I think my costumes are generally ready for that. So we're we're getting there. That's me. Okay. 
Jordan, how about you? Uh, when I'm not in intense dental pain, I am streaming over on YouTube. And uh, recently I had a very different stream. Uh, we've been doing a bunch of Amiibo content. Uh, we are in a couple months going to be relaunching the Professional Amiibo League. And I am working on making some Amiibo into trophies. I've been painting them. And the audio only listeners, you can't see the uh, golden Yoshi I am showing off for one. He's got like a white under jaw too. That was really nice. Yeah, I keep the I kept the uh, the white of it. It still needs a lot of work. Uh, these are all in the half phase. Like the Pikachu here, like has no more face basically because he's covered mm -hmm. in gold paint. We'll be painting that back on. Pikachu needs a face. Yeah. He's um, this Mega Man's gonna be black and gold right mm -hmm. here, but uh, we only got the gold. And the one I'm most impressed by, I have an inkling that has turned out really good. Golden oh, inkling looks pretty. awesome. So this is mostly just an ad for you to go to our YouTube page and check that out. Because <laughs> uh, cool. I'm quite proud of the efforts there. So yeah, if you would like to uh, see more of that content, show up and uh, have fun with us and all our Amiibo shenanigans and XCOM shenanigans. Cool. As for me, um, I've got another podcast. Uh, my friend Dylan and I talk about board games on the Innkeeper's Table, and we have new episodes every Friday morning. Most recently, we did a game spotlight on a game called Paint the Roses, which is a cooperative logic deduction game themed around Alice in Wonderland, the Queen of Hearts, where um, you're basically laying tiles and giving clues about what um, card you have you what secret card you have and you're trying to figure out what each person has as you fail the queen of hearts moves around a track and catches up to you as you succeed you move forward but when you fail the queen moves twice as fast she's always moving but when you fail she doubles her movement mm. so it it's just and she speeds up as you progress through the game it's a lot of fun really cool game and then of course our next episode uh, we have another top three list. This time we talk about our top three games about food. So that's fun stuff. Man, that's so that's an entire subgenre, huh? I mean, it can be. It's a it's just oh, a theme. Yeah. It's not a, a subgenre in of itself. It's just a theme that, you know, a I lot mean, of games I've, have I've different I've seen themes. lots of different games in my random social media that have popped oh, up. I do like, like food, so I can see what you about would. like. So I could have sworn I saw one about sushi, but I don't know. Yeah, sushi anyway. go. I've got sushi go. Okay. Could have sworn there was one. Yep. Yeah. Uh, for those of our listeners who want to support the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies, but you can't become patrons, we'd love it if you'd actually just let your friends know about the show and help us build our uh, our listener base. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, to like and subscribe over on youtube.com slash Cosmere Studies. And if you want to toss us a good review wherever you listen to us, please do that. We want to, we, we, we like good reviews. It makes us feel good and it helps improve our uh, audience. Also, head on over to again to store.streamelements.com slash Cosmere Studies to buy six merch like the shirt that Amy is so wonderfully modeling for us this right evening. There. Right there. You got it. She's wearing a purple number that was created by the six podcasts. <laughs> uh, all right, guys. Final thoughts on what we've talked about tonight. I never feel like I know as much as I should when people ask questions. But that's I okay. really I really need Imposter to pay attention. Syndrome. Yeah, I really need to pay attention when people ask questions like this and find just find out how much it all touches together because I spent a lot of time looking this stuff up that I didn't <laughs> anticipate spending. Oh, there's all sorts of stuff in there. No, I just I just enjoy hearing theories, discussing theories, going down tangents. It's all sort that's all. It's all always fun to see the, the the stuff people come up with and I'm like, how did I not think of that? But there's always going to be another cool theory that someone comes up with. Yep. We appreciate that. Oh, boy. Well, special thanks to our patron producer, Mims Laundry Service. No expl explanations required. No questions asked. In addition to the live episodes of the show that stream on twitch.tv slash innkeepers table every two weeks on Monday nights at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern, the listeners can find our videos on YouTube or audio versions of the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and just about any other service that carries podcasts by searching for Cosmere Studies. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook under the profile at Cosmere Studies. Next time, we're going to have a special guest. 
Steve from the Read and Find Out YouTube channel will be joining us as a guest host. We're still tossing around topic ideas amongst us, so I, if you want to know what we final settle on, you'll have to, well, listen and find out. So be there for the live discussion at, at 7.30 p.m. Pacific Time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern on Monday, July 18th, 2022 at www.twitch.tv slash innkeeperstable. Until then, though, on behalf of Amy, Jordan, and myself, thanks for listening. And remember, there's, there's always, always another, another secret. secret.